Hey guys, this is Max Crit here. <clears throat> this is the other game I've been playing lately, um, Arc Age. So, I wanted to make a video on some of the reasons why Arc Age is fun. Um, it's a little different from other MMOs in, uh, in the sense that you make a little more impact on the world. A little more. Arc Age is a little more hardcore, it's a little more rough and dangerous. It's a. Uh, it's got consequences and, and failure and and uh, and farming. Now here's my little farm. Here um, I've decided to focus on gathering as, as one of the trade skills. And one of the reasons Arc Age is fun is that there's not a lot you can't gather even from the beginning of the game. You gain proficiency in gathering but from the beginning you can you don't have to be a certain level or have your gathering a certain degree to find something in the wild and pick it. You can just get it and the more proficiency you have the more you'll get out of it. It's a system that makes a lot more sense than um, trying to level up a craft along with your own level and as you go between the zones you might it might be lagging behind so you cannot gather anymore you have to go back and farm <clears throat> now in Arc Age there's more of an economy of items each item has its use and its uh, specialty so even this flower that I harvested the Narcissus will be used in certain recipes or it can be broken down into dried flowers and combined with other things to trade. And uh, that's one of the, the differences and, and features of Arc Age is trade. Between cities you can go and produce these specialties. These um, The zone I'm in right now is Arkham Iris and so it produces specialties, the, the low level ones, easy uh, roasted eggs and lava spice. So if I get 50 dried flowers, 60 turmeric, and the quality certificate, I can make a trade pack and then deliver that trade pack to some far off land where they might need something like this. It's, it's a rare commodity that they might want. And so they'll give me gold for it. Um, so right now there are if we look at the map, there are two main continents where players start. And if you trade within your continent to any of these zones, you will uh, just receive gold for your trade pack, depending on how far you, you deliver it, and depending on how many other people have delivered that same thing to that place. So if I delivered it all the way to Yenistir from Arkham Iris, I'd probably expect pretty good profit. And if I figure out something that it's a little rare that maybe someone haven't thought to deliver there, it will have a greater chance of maximizing how much I earn. Now, delivering trade packs, you go much slower than your average speed. If I show you um, on a mount, the mounts are fast and, and fun to ride in this game. Which is another reason Arc Age is fun, is the mount system. Um, so here's my Snow Lion Tigris. It goes on a pretty good clip by, his, by himself, but every 30 seconds I can hit this dash. For 10 seconds, so one third of the time I'm going at this dash speed. Tearing up the terrain, feeling the wind go by. It's pretty great. Now, uh, if I'm going at a, with a trade pack on foot or on my normal mount, I'll go at a snail's pace, kind of a, a walking pace. So I got one ways to upgrade this speed in trading is to get donkey. Donkeys are good at carrying trade packs. So here's my donkey steadfast. Without a trade pack, he'll move at a pretty steady clip but he'll go about a third of this rate with a heavy trade pack. But it's a lot faster than walking. And if I level him up, uh, 
the mount system's great because leveling pets will get you new abilities. He can get a speed boost if I use a carrot. <coughs> speed boost for a whole minute. So I can spend my time farming and trading, riding my donkey, and all this will give me experience. It's, uh, it's a very legitimate way of leveling up and only requires labor points. Now, labor points is a system that I think is a pretty good idea, a pretty good concept. Um, during the alpha and beta, they tweaked it and changed it and made it go up and down. And uh, at some point, it was twice as much as it was now, and people were leveling too fast or or some such thing. But it's a hard hard system to get right, but it does fit an MMO structure quite well. So, using my labor, I can harvest my, my grapevines. For five labor, I can pick a grapevine. I only got two grapes, which is kind of the low end. Five, five points in gathering, so I get about as much proficiency as I use labor. So over time, going to gain proficiency in, uh, in the trade skills I use, and um, I'll develop uh, specialties. Uh, there's quite a few. Um, these, the gathering proficiency will uh, let me later be a lot more efficient in seed gathering when I make bundles and uh, I optimize my space, time, and labor the more that I get in a skill. And thus it kind of improves my chances for profit in, with that proficiency. Um, there are things like metalworking and carpentry where you make uh, different ingots and lumber. And the more I use that, the more efficient I'll get at it. But the base useful items can be produced by anyone day one, and you just get better and better at it. It's it's uh, kind of immersive, almost more realistic simulation than you'd get in a lot of, of MMOs. So here, my grapevines all. I'll gather from those, for example, will become fruited every certain amount of real time, uh, about four and a half hours. These grapevines will produce grapes. And certain random things can occur. You can get more grapes, less grapes. Sometimes your grapevine will die and you'll have to plant another one. Um, so it's interactive. Now if you uh, notice in between these grapevines I've planted some flowers, some azaleas. Since my focus is on gathering, gathering flowers and making them into dried flowers or just selling the flowers, will uh, return to me what it costs to make them. Maybe even with a little profit if they're in demand. <coughs> So I, I also planted these other kinds of flowers, which are used as another ingredient for different things in alchemy or, or um, for trade packs. In this other little plot, I have uh, planted more flowers and mushrooms. Mushrooms can be ground into medicinal powder. Um, and I've planted banana trees, which will grow me bananas in, a, in 12 and a half hours, so I'll probably be checking these trees tomorrow and harvesting the bananas off of those. Um, now, potatoes are just a very cheap filler crop. You occasionally need uh, chopped produce or potatoes to produce things. Now, I've, I've changed my tone quite a bit on Arcage. Even though it's been a very rocky launch, there have been problems with queue times, crashing, 
uh, bugs, just kind of interface problems, uh, problems with quests. Very rocky. There's just something, just something about Arcage. Now they use a, a Cry Engine, I believe, and to great effect. I mean, just the visuals in Arcage make the world seem more massive. Just the fact that I can see little rocks over there, clear over to the mountains. The draw distance in this game just seems immense. You can stare out at the sea and just almost want to go exploring. You feel like you're somewhere where you can go and interact and, and find things. It's the, um, the gathering system is quite interactive because uh, little random trees or plants might show up somewhere and they're they're going to be fairly valuable valuable if you find a tree it's like uh, you know something to be celebrated because you just got logs which are very needed and very rare uh, they have an economy of building things which I think is very unique for a game like this here's a fellow moving this trading pack over to uh, this construction site or, or beyond. Moving along, we spend the labor as a commodity and not just uh, something free into f farm all day. So with the economy, building houses, boats, um, later on castles, uh, farms, uh, you can build uh, even a farming wagon and, and trucks and cars and harvesters and things. Now another rocky thing about the launch is it uh, it released without everything there that that the Arc Age uh, developers planned on being there. It's, we've got kind of a minimum around of races. Uh, minimum amount of trading system kind of a but it's kind of a skeleton for something great now the PvP is supposed to be fighting over a territory and and they haven't added in the territory you fight over yet really and so there's a lot of discussion on on when that's going to be released and when will be as feature complete as other areas that play Arc Age in the North American version, we've got uh, arenas, basic dungeons and raids, and we've got pirating. Now, pirating is uh, one of the bigger forms of PvP, and it it motivates people to go up against each other and and uh, fight each other for resources and trade routes. And so going over the sea anywhere is just, it's, it's deadly, it's risky, it's dangerous. Uh, you can lose your boat, you can lose anything you're trying to travel with, you can, uh, you can die and have to respawn on land somewhere. It's, it's a risky, risky business, so they made rewarding things in the in the waters. They've made underwater mining and underwater treasure hunting. Just all kinds of activities. But there's always a sense of risk because a lot of games have tried to add dynamic events like Guild Wars 2 and things, but the most dynamic thing inside any game is its players. So you're out on the ocean you don't know what's going to happen because a player might do something. A player can initiate some kind of event, something that happens, an attack, an assault, a raid that you need to anticipate or plan for. You need to run and hide your boat and fly away and escape or find a secret route. It's an interesting system because it's dynamic. It's not static and repetitive. Things can happen that you don't anticipate. And uh, 
that's one of the biggest reasons why our gauge is fun. So the, for the faint of heart, it's pretty intimidating. It's pretty intimidating to try to do any of that stuff because um, no one wants to uh, be able to fail that hard, I guess. No one wants to die. No one wants to lose their stuff getting uh, owned by the Zerg or any of that, but the risk and the danger can be kind of fun <coughs> if, you, if you set yourself to overcome it. So that's some of the many reasons why Arc Age is fun. As you can see, I've, I've grinded my way through all the quests and zones to get to 50 already, so leveling isn't really the focus. The economy, um, gold, crafting, uh, and the territory and PvP wars is, is the focus of this game. Leveling is just a way to train your guy to flesh out his skill set. I have gone with kind of an assassin archer myself with a little survivability and defense, some extra uh, stun. The class is called a stone arrow. <coughs> it's not one of the mo more prevalent ones right now. I, I've definitely noticed other people who have gone with Stone Arrow. And it's it's been rewarding. It's fun to play. It's fast-paced. You get the quests done. You become efficient at, you know, killing the mobs, jumping back on your mount, turning it in four or five quests at a time. So even that can be fun and rewarding. Uh, they've spaced out the rewards for the items and new equipment quite a bit, so I've even continued questing just to find that, to complete that set of armor or to find that next DPS weapon that will that will upgrade my game. So they're rare and kind of far between and finding them can be pretty, pretty rewarding and exciting because um, it does so much to uh, change the look and success of your character. Um, as you'll notice, my mount is, uh, is an elk. I have uh, quite a few different mounts, um, and even uh, a battle pet, which is a little uh, like saber-toothed cat. Um, the mount system is pretty fun. It's You, you get a mount, you raise it a little bit, you give it a name, and some armor, then when you level it up, it gains all kinds of new abilities. I had to go across the ocean and into enemy territory, clear to their uh, starter zone, the Guyanid Forest, in order to uh, get an elk from the opposite faction, and, and it was it was risky. I, I got attacked several times. I almost got taken out by a group of like five level 20s. Although they were way lower level than me, they were able to use so much stun and CC and crowd control on me that it was hard to maneuver. And I ended up popping a lots of potions and trying to maneuver around and eventually beat those players, but it was, it was very risky and uh, so I feel like successfully accomplishing that mission of getting an elk was something fun and, and I'm rewarded with this mount that has archery abilities which go along with my class so I can snipe and fire mounted fire arrows and the last ability even this elegant leap looks great so the elk's a great mount and I had to do <clears throat> something risky and exploring to obtain it, and so that's that's a fun factor for Arch Age again to do something risky and rewarding. I'm really excited about where this game is headed and what they could do with it. There's so much potential with this type of mentality to creating a game. Um, if they don't be completely anti-consumer and, and let the new content that comes out you know, be available to everyone who works at it. 
um, I think it, it can go some pretty good places and uh, once the launch has settled down and there's less trouble you can earn just about anything in this game uh, over time you can you can buy patron status by earning enough gold and buying it from other players um, I've done so myself I've built up quite a, a credit stash just from uh, my, the quest gold and uh, labor points and farming uh, trading on the auction house I uh, uh, sometimes people will even pay for services, uh, run them through dungeons, doing daily quests. You can earn enough gold to, to get into the game and start participating. And so, I think Dark Age is worth a try. I've really changed my tune on this game, seen its potential. And uh, if you'd like to try it too or haven't tried it yet because you've heard about all the problems, um, coming up soon things will be better and ironed out and I think everyone should give it a try see what they think really explore the depth of the game alright well thanks thanks for watching and uh, I hope this was informative for you and we'll see you next time